I actually was wondering just because I see it a lot online is what are some of the things that make someone high risk or no longer low risk? Because I feel like people, they misinterpret this and they think, oh, you know, I'm not high risk because of this, this, or this. And they, you know, and they kind of, they don't really know what that means. So I figure if I ask you, what does, what is actually high risk or no longer in the low risk, maybe not high, but you're, you're, leaning more towards you're not here anymore you're leaning more towards the high risk because i just think that's a total misconception of like oh yeah i'm fine but i'm like oh no maybe you're not fine <laughs> so well there's so like i said there's so many things on that list and they actually do go from mildly high risk like someone who's just 35 and that's the only thing on their list of things of what are their pregnancy problems yes by criteria, by definition, they are a high-risk pregnancy. And you know, just for a minute, if you want to know why is it that we use 35 to make somebody high risk, it's because, and I hate to say it because most of my patients these days are over 35, but when you're over 35, your blood vessels are older. So you are more likely to have poor placental function or hypertension or diabetes or any other vascular problems. So unless you're like a 35 year old super athlete who's been, you know, thin and has great muscle tone and you've been doing the cardiovascular exercise regularly, yes, then maybe it's not all about the number, but most 35 year olds don't have the body makeup, the blood vessel uh, makeup, you know, uh, the vascular structure of a 25 year old. And not that I'm saying all 25 year olds are healthy, not at all, but strictly by an age criteria, the older after 35 you go, we think your body it potentially can be less healthy for many reasons. So that is a high risk person. And then any number of things would make someone high risk. If you're diabetic, diabetic, before pregnancy or you become diabetic in pregnancy, you're high risk. If you have a BMI over 28, you're high risk, especially over 30. So obesity, because, and it doesn't automatically mean all those people are unhealthy people. We're just talking about high risk from a perspective of pregnancy and, and of course delivery. Um, high blood pressure, either coming into the pregnancy with high blood pressure, having high blood pressure in a previous pregnancy or becoming hypertensive in pregnancy makes you high risk. Um, if you have certain medical conditions, so you might have lupus, extremely high risk for pregnancy. Um, other connective tissue problems, there are many different categories of, of uh, vascular and connective tissue disease, very high risk. Anyone who has a cardiac problem, very high risk in pregnancy. And depending on what it is, you know, like something simple like mitral valve, um, you know, prolapse is not something that would make you as high risk to somebody who has like pericarditis or in, a, in a previous pregnancy or cardiomyopathy. These are very high risk cardiac problems because, and why would a cardiac issue make a woman so high risk? Because in pregnancy, your load is more, you have more weight, you have more fluid in your system, your cardiac output, your, the amount your heart beats and the amount it pumps is more in pregnancy. So if your heart is not working properly or it has some kind of disease, either genetically or anatomically, that makes you high risk. Any other organ disease, kidney disease, super high risk in pregnancy. Um, let's see, other things. Things that happened in your previous pregnancies. If you were preeclamptic in your previous pregnancy, if you have a hematologic disease like low platelets, either in a previous pregnancy or now, high risk as well. If you're an IVF pregnancy, high risk. If you had multiple miscarriages in the past, you're high risk. If you had a baby with a chromosomal abnormality in the past, you're high risk. If you have twins, you're high risk. Um, I, I probably haven't even hit on most of them, but you can see anything that puts you in a list of you're not a completely normal under 35 year old with no medical issues or problems. You don't even have anemia or anything, which everyone gets in pregnancy. If you're not in that category, then you're not in a, a low risk category and it moves you up as to high, how high risk by the number and nature and severity of the problems that you have. So there's a lot of people walking around out there that go, nope, not me. I don't know why I'm high risk, but I'm doing NSTs twice a week. Why do you think that is? 
That's a, that's exactly, that's exactly what I noticed is there's a lot of people that are like, why? And I'm like, well, you're 40. And while you had IVF, like there's a lot of things that I'm like, it's, you need to be like, you need to have put a little bubble around you. We need to protect you a little bit more. You know what I mean? Just extra, it's that extra. And I always tell people, I don't know why everybody complains about all the extra stuff because I loved it because mm -hmm. I love seeing baby and I love knowing everything is okay. So yeah. what, exactly what you yeah. just said was great for me. Cause I'm like, yeah. That's I, I don't know rarely, why people don't like it. <laughs> I've rarely yeah. seen a 40 year old have a completely normal pregnancy and a completely normal delivery, even if up to the moment they got pregnant, they never had a problem before. It's just the nature of the age. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that is took me a long time to figure out is that your pregnancy may have no bearing on your birth and vice versa. So if totally. somebody <laughs> was working with a maternal fetal specialist from the day they popped a positive pregnancy test and they were cared for very carefully, very assiduously all the way until they were term, they could just be punted off to just any old obstetric doctor for the delivery. And I was like, no, 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 that's not right. You were, you were so, so high risk during your pregnancy. You can't have a normal birth. And then I was like, why not? Yeah, no, it is true. You, first of all, you can't do anything about somebody's genetics. And part of your delivery is genetic, like based on the shape of your pelvis. You know, you can't do anything about that. And I kind of laugh at all the people who think that they're gonna do something like some kind of exercise or take some kind of probiotic or something that's gonna change something that's not a changeable fact. You can't do it. Part of it, you might as well give it up now because part of the whole experience, a majority of the whole experience is really out of your control. I would never tell somebody not to eat well, not to exercise, all the things you can do, you can do all of them. And not to be negative, but that's not a guarantee about a great delivery or a great uh, a birth experience. And I like that you pointed that out too, because that's the home birth way is like, you know what I mean? Like eat good and, you know, work out or whatever. And it was, and when I lost Gavin, I was, I was doing yoga like every day and I walked, my job was nothing but walking in large casinos. So I walked I don't know how much I was walking. So walking does not bring your baby out and walking <laughs> does not mean you're more healthy during pregnancy either. So those are all things that just drove me crazy because one of the first questions I asked after I lost him in the hospital was, what did I do wrong? I must have done something wrong to have this happen. And then later on, I found out from doctors that were like, that has nothing to do with what happened to you. Like not at all. It's, it's a shame because the more people buy into things that they think they can change, then of course they do take it on themselves when things don't go the way they want it to, you know, and you can only plan so much, plan as much as you want and be flexible enough to know that it may not happen the way you planned. And that's the best thing. Oh, I was talking to my mom last month and she had, as far as I know, nine uncomplicated pregnancies, nine uncomplicated labors, nine live births. As far as I know, no miscarriages. She's like, why do we need all this stuff? And I'm looking at her and like, girl, you are a statistical anomaly. <laughs> right. She's the exception, you know, to the point where I try not to talk to my patients about people who completely deliver normally you know, so that, or, nor, or what you, they would consider normal because it, it sets you up for a false narrative, you know? It really does. So. Yeah, I had, I had hoped I had mom's, you know, whatever magical, <laughs> magical genes or whatever. It's like, and oh my pelvis. God. <laughs> and pelvis. I don't know if I had her pelvis or not. We never got to the point. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't care. C-sections work and I'm, I'm ready to skip all of the uncertainty at, that's that's the one thing that I must say that I am kind of like completely opposite to the natural childbirth where they are just absolutely confident that if you go through the process, everything will work out okay. And I went through the process and it was like, oh no, it, it, 
it did not work out okay and the c-section wasn't so bad so mm -hmm. i'd like to skip the part where i don't know if it's going to end okay and go straight to the everything you know <laughs> shortcut mm -hmm. Wow. And, you know. and it's like I always get mad when people are like oh you're too posh to push it's like no I'm scared shitless I'm sorry <laughs> not only that people who say something like that don't really know that it has nothing to do with that I mean your baby was likely saved by the idea that it should come out one way instead of another you know so oh 100 percent. he would have not survived yeah. I mean I definitely spend a lot of time at a first prenatal visit and then some subsequent visits, like a lot of times people will ask me, what's, what's the one best word of advice you could give me for you know, my pregnancy? And my best word of advice is turn off all the incoming stuff that doesn't come from me or some medical person that's helping take care of you. It's nice that your mother has an opinion. It's nice that your sister-in-law has an opinion, but anything that they tell you, especially if it's directly opposite of what I'm telling you, please turn it off. And if you have a question about it, I'm not saying no one knows anything but me, but come to me, ask me about it. Let me give you my evidence-based way to either encourage that or negate that. But please don't take that as equal to my advice for you and decide, oh, I'm making a decision between these two things. They're not equal. They're not equal choices for somebody to tell you, go do this and stand on your head and you know do spin around and, and you'll fix your pelvis. Then for me to say, no, you've got this high risk problem and here's what we really need to do about it. And yes, you have choices within what I can tell you about, but those other things are not the same as what we're talking about. So that's my best word of advice is really not to listen to all of that and let it confuse you. I would say, uh, I don't know, I didn't actually listen to anybody in my it's pregnancy. Good. I was completely, there was no social media and all I knew was, why. <laughs> all I knew was that mom had nine kids, did okay. My oldest sister had three and did okay. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, hopefully genetics hold for me. And then it was like, mm, well, not. no, <laughs> not the time around We're we're, you're not going to, you're not going to get the same outcome. And honestly, I was not really torn up about it because I lived on a farm. I watched animals give birth. And, oh, yeah, eating their placentas. <laughs> and eating their placentas. But I, when you watch an animal give birth, it, it doesn't look like fun. They don't look like they're having a good time. And it's like, okay, birth hurts, it sucks, it's messy, and then in the end, you get a baby. I was not looking for anything more than that. 